Hey everybody, we are at the Miami FC home office. We are here this week to sit down and talk with the head coach, Paul Daglish, to talk about the vision of Miami FC, of what's going on, what's where they're going in the future. You know, some of you guys may not know a whole lot about Miami FC, but here we are in their office. And we're going to sit down with uh, the man and find out everything about Miami FC, where they're going, what is uh, what what is the future hold for them. Uh, talk about the upcoming game in the in the Nisa Showcase, all that stuff. Up next. Hey everybody, we are at the Miami FC headquarters, their front office, you want whatever you want to call it, sitting here with the legendary Paul Daglish. I mean, you've had a heck of a career. Uh, you know, he's your current Miami FC coach. I remember watching you play for uh, Houston Dynamo. That was a lot of fun, that, that little bit of time that you played in, in MLS. And now uh, you're here with Miami FC. And I got to be honest, I know what I know about Miami FC is more in the past. And what I know is Miami FC has a history of getting amazing players and winning every tournament uh, they enter, winning all the games, basically, you know. But what I don't really know is where you guys are going in the future. Mm. So I'd like to like spend some time with you today and just kind of get to know yep. where's Miami FC going. And a lot of our viewers, I don't think, know that either. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate the intro. First time I've ever been called legendary. But I'll take it. I'll take it. It's only my mom ever said that to me. I mean, before. I've also called some other, uh, you know, uh, some other, you know, bench role players legendary. But yeah. uh, you know, yeah. we call them the ben legendary bench warriors. Right. You yeah. actually, yeah, you did a great job in MLS. Right. It was a short stint, yeah. you know, like yeah. a little over a year, but yeah. it was it was great to watch. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We had a great team. It was fun yeah. to be a part of. But now you're coaching. Now I'm coaching, yeah. When um, my body couldn't go anymore, it was always something I wanted to do. It was to get into coaching, and, and I've I've uh, I've landed in Miami for for the last two years. So um, been really enjoying it, really enjoying it here. So what is tell our tell our viewers what is the makeup of Miami FC? What are the players? What what kind of players are you looking for? Like I said, I know that you guys have in the past been willing to spend. Yeah, and I don't know if that's sustainable moving forward, or or what's your plans for the, the the club, the squad itself? Yeah, well, obviously the plan is to play in Nisa right. um, next year, and we will put together a team that we feel can, as we always do, that can compete for for titles. Um, the the um, the most important thing here is that we have uh, a style of play mm -hmm. that is more important than the coach, more important than the players. Because um, I think that's the only way that you can have direction as a club, the only way that you can have long-term success. I think if you look at some of the, the best teams in the world, if you take Barcelona, for example, Barcelona, were uh, when they played under Guardiola and even after Guardiola, they played with 4-3-3 and they played the same way at every level of, of the club. In recent years, because Messi was so good, they've almost changed away from the club philosophy and mm -hmm. the system of play to accommodate a true world-class player. Now, that's okay, you know, if you've got a Messi, but yeah. I don't think we're ever going to have a Messi at Miami FC. So um, we've got to make sure that that never changes, and any players that come in have to be the correct player profile of of, uh, of for the team, and also any coach has to agree to play that style of football. And that was something that when I came in a couple of years ago, I was really keen to put in place because that gives everybody direction, it keeps you efficient, it makes you be able to spend less money because you know exactly what a Miami FC left back looks like, you know what the profile is, you know what the profile of a centre back is, midfield player. Uh, and that was something that we've worked really hard to, to, to put together and that is something that is going to stay with the organisation for, for as long as, for as, long as, um, for as, long as uh, I'm here and as long as the people are making the decisions um, that brought me here are still here as well. So how, you know, Miami FC is not the only club in town. Yeah. So how important is it for Miami FC to really carve out its niche being like the super hyper local team? Yeah, well, look, the, the we're not the only team in town. Um, no, we got a lot popping got, up, yeah, you know, yeah. whether it be yeah. MLS yeah. or, or yeah. Miami United. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of lot of yeah. clubs in town. Yeah, and, and what we've got to do is we've got to have our own identity. 
So if we think we are, if we think we are into Miami, then we're going to fail. If we think we are, um, if we think we are Miami United, we're going to fail. If we think we're anything other than ourselves or get concerned about anybody else, then we're going to fail. What we've got to do is we've got to pick a direction that that we want to 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 follow. And we've got to follow it. And and I feel that like you said we we've been really successful. We've won trophies, but when you when you've won your trophies, then what do you do with them apart from stick them? Yeah, they look nice behind us, interview. right? Yeah, yeah. And let people see them when they walk in. I mean, but the, the memories are there, but they're, they're gone. What what we want to do is we want to change folks a little bit. And it's something that I'm going to be focusing on over the next few years is to to really build a community base. Um, we are, you know, our players are accessible. They're in the community. We, we've been, you know, we've been in out at the local youth clubs being doing appearances and not just our own academy, but any any and all academies that, that want us there. Obviously not all clubs would want you in and right. that's their choice. But we, we've got to make sure that if we want to be a community club, that we give our time. I think time's the most valuable thing that you can give. And it's not about going there and waving and taking pictures. You've got to go and show you care. You've got to go and put time, real hours into to the community. And you've got to go and, and, and be there even when there's no cameras there. So you're looking for not only players, but ambassadors. So the way I, the way I, look, at, the way I look at the community is any, any person that we touch in, in the community can become a future fan. Right. But no not all players can become a future player. So I'm a big believer that you shouldn't be punished by the level of ability that you are. So you should get to interact with Miami FC regardless of the ability you are. We don't care what level of player you are. We feel that you should still get access to our brand through our community outreach program and through our academy uh, outreach program as well that, that we're putting in place. So I'm really, really big on that. Um, not everyone is blessed with with an ability to play football at the highest level, but it doesn't mean you love it any less. No, I get that completely because I was not blessed. Yeah, I played, yeah. and I was, you know, I was generally on the bench. Yeah, you know, yeah. but I, I learned to love the game, yeah. and I'll tell you how important those those touches that you have yeah. on all those young players are. Is I remember like it was yesterday. Yeah, playing at in Norwood, which yeah. is a, a an area in um, you know North Miami, close to Dolphin Stadium, yeah. and playing on this dirt field pretty much and the Fort Lauderdale strikers who were the team yeah. of in the 70s because that's that's my era and they come they came and they ran us through drills and they came, they showed up in full game day uniforms yeah. and that left such an imprint on me yeah that I think Miami FC can definitely do the same well, thing for yeah. the the youth of today it's funny, someone else was telling me that yesterday that Ray Hudson came out to the practice he may have been there yeah. but as a kid yeah. You know, you just know. I don't know their names. Yeah. They just were like all legends and and, and, and it's true. Rock I remember. Stars. I remember. Look, I, I was I was lucky enough that I grew up in football. Right. So I grew up in the corridors of Anfield, and and I had interaction with players every week. You know, when I was younger, my dad would take me to training and let me kick the ball against the field at Liverpool's training ground, against the wall at Liverpool's training ground, and and it was it was an amazing childhood. But even at that, if a player came to an award ceremony to hand out the awards, or I was in a soccer camp and a player attended that at the end of the camp, I remember being wowed by that. And and I don't forget, I don't forget those things. And I think that when I'm making decisions in the organisation now, I don't forget being a kid and I don't right. forget where I came from. And I think it's really, really important that, as I said, it can't just be something that you go and have your picture taken. It's got to be something that people genuinely believe that you care um, so I've, I've gone and done coaching education with the, the coaches already at the academy I've gone out uh, to see the kids I've done uh, two free clinics now on, on RSS um, uh, field that you know I ran I ran both of them so I'm, I'm actually I'm a big believer that if I, we're going to take that direction as an organisation it has to come from the top and it has to start with me yeah, so let's talk about, you talked about academy. Let's go digger, dig deeper into yeah. that. What is the Miami FC Academy? Well, the Miami FC Academy at the moment is very small. Um, we, have, we have assumed um, uh, an existing academy that plays in the shadows of Ricardo Silva Stadium. Um, so 
at this moment in time we are we are doing our first kind of improvements if you like to to the 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 facility we had a volunteers day where we went and we put banners up um we um did a little bit of work on the clubhouse we took the inflatables put the kids in the inflatable soccer field um we've branded we, we've provided training equipment for the the um for the coaches all the training gear we've provided training equipment for the players with balls and uh, pennies just to try and show that look we we want to we want to to try and make this thing as as um as good as we can and and it's very very difficult to change too much too quickly when before tryouts in in may really so most kids in youth soccer are signed up to a program already mm-hmm. and I think there is actually a fee even in youth soccer if you want to oh, yeah. terminate your contract oh. that you have to pay a termination fee to leave one club to go to another club so it's very it's not normal that, that people leave clubs mid-year so what we've got is we've got a lot of time to to put in um, put in the changes that we want to put in before tryouts in May next year and, and that's what we've got to be focused on doing as I said I've had the first um First off-field coaching education meeting with the uh, with the coaches, and I've had um, the first when we did the camp before the game on Saturday. The first introduction to some of the academy coaches, what we want to see when the players come on the field, because that is my that's a passion of mine is youth development and how you synchronise the first team with the youngest player that comes in and how you develop that player to eventually be a player within your first team even if they don't become that player in your first team if you have a clear structure and a clear methodology you're going to give the, you're going to give them the best chance and how many what, what's the age range what kind of how many we, teams are you going to have we've got all the way from 6 all the way up to U19 right so we we will be boys girls all age all ranges all age groups eventually um, and as I said we we don't just want to have a, an academy program at this facility. We want to grow this as big as we can, and we want it to be all inclusive. Um, and, and as I said, I, I don't think everybody. I think there's going to be very few players, people that ever play in our first team. And I think people that focus their attention on just a first team player are missing out 99.9 percent of people who love soccer in the community. And we want to have an all inclusive academy, um, and that's what. That's what we're going to try and do over the coming years. You know, a big discussion with academies is yeah. cost. This, yeah. you know, travel soccer and all that can be very, very yeah. expensive. How's that going to look for my NDFC? Is this going to be a free program or a cheap program yeah. or, you know, what's it going to I look think, like? I think what you've got to do is obviously costs need to be covered sure. somewhere. So costs come from somewhere. Um, what we feel is the bigger that we are, the easier it is to sell sponsorship the easier it is to negotiate better prices when you're buying apparel. Right. The easier it is. So the 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 um, economy of scale is something that's necessary to be able to offer it for as cheap a price as possible. Um, because obviously the coaches need paid, the lights need paid, the fields need maintained. Um, so that there is, there is some cost of doing business. Um, but I genuinely believe that the bigger you become, the bigger you have a greater economy of scale. And then you can drive down the prices. So we'll try to keep it affordable. It's got to be affordable, right? you know, and, and that's Because that's one of the biggest problems with youth yeah. soccer. It's just too expensive for for your, your, your middle or lower yeah. class yeah. kids to, to go and uh, travel all yeah. across the nation, you know? Yeah. So that's, you know, it's gotta be affordable. I think, I think, and that's the other thing that, if, if you think, if you think people say, oh, you've got to travel, you've got to travel and you've got to play at this level of competition and you've got to, go and do all this I think it's 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 important but it's not the be all and end all because if, if you think about uh, youth soccer if you train three or four times a week and you play a game at the weekend there's three things that you need to develop a youth soccer play you need quality of your environment which is your training facilities and your coaches you need quality of your teammate and you need quality of your opposition so if you have quality of your environment that's four out of your five days that you play soccer if you have quality of your teammate, that's four out of the five days that you play soccer. Quality or position is only one out of five. So it's the least important thing that you need for to develop a youth soccer player. Mm-hmm. And so as long as you have a quality of your environment and quality of your teammate, 
then you can develop players. I think the strain that families are put through to travel and play a team that isn't much better than a team that you could drive 30, 40 minutes to play isn't always worthwhile. The other thing I disagree with in youth soccer as well, as an ex-youth soccer coach right. and as a, a dad with two kids and a son that, that plays youth soccer is, I hate the Thanksgiving tournaments and all these holidays that people want you to go and play in soccer tournaments. Mm -hmm. You can play them on any day of the year. Yeah, we didn't do that back no. in the 70s and now 80s. Now they're massive. You know, I went on some tournaments as a yeah. kid and they were and they were big, but uh, they weren't on holidays. Yeah, uh, yeah I know now that they, that is yeah, generally... Yeah, Thanksgiving, everything. I mean, at Thanksgiving, I want to be at home with the family. With the family. Right. Uh, and I think that sometimes you, you've got to remember that it is a game. It is fun. And that, you know, that... You've got to you've got to make sure that you prioritise. Sure. And for me, football isn't more important than family. Um, family comes first always, and I think that one of the things that I genuinely believe in is if you enjoy your family and you've got the support of your family, then it's easier to become a better soccer player at the same time. All right. So we got the academy. We've got the hyper local, yeah. really Miami FC. So we see the vision. What's next? We've got a game coming up soon. Yeah. Let's talk about where we're at in the Nisa Showcase. Yeah, so um, we're on a bit of a streak at this moment in time. I think we're... 17 out of 19 games? Yeah, win, 19, like that. 19, 19 unbeaten, um, 17 wins of those 19. So we're, we're in really good form. We're unbeaten in Nisa. Um, so we, we want to... We, we had a goal when, when we joined Nisa that we wanted to be the first name on the trophy. Um, and we've put ourselves in a position to be that first name on the trophy. Um, because... I think that any competition that you enter, you've got to try and win it, uh, and that's the mentality here. And, and we said, look, let's take this, let's make sure we do everything in our powers to, to make sure that we're the first name on that trophy. So, on the 9th of November, we're hoping that we we, we achieve our goal. And who are we playing against? Playing in Stumptown, who's a team that we've right. played already. We've played them twice already. I can't ever get their name right. I keep calling them Stumpton or Stumptown. Yeah. I'm stumped. So it's, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I hope they're stumped on the night. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're a good team. They've got um, a couple of full Jamaican internationals in, in uh, Sergio Campbell and, and Michael Bins that are real quality. You know, they're, they're good players. They're um, they're certainly they're certainly you know a, a very high level of team, higher than what we faced really in, in the MPSL. So we're going to have to be at our best to, to try and achieve our goals. And so it's right here at uh, Ricardo Silva Stadium again, yeah. November 9th. Yeah, and, and to show we, we are opening it up for to kids for free. Great. So any, any youth soccer players that want to come, I think it's 12 and under, can attend for free. So we want to make sure, we want to make sure that when we have this, if we're going to say we're a community club, these are opportunities for us to show it. So we will right. have a a camp on the field again before the game. The curriculum will be written by me, um, and that will be for 100 kids, and, and they will all be allowed free into the game. Um, then we're going to have, at half time, we're going to have a Champions Parade where we're going to invite all youth soccer players that have won a trophy this year to come and get the adulation for winning the trophy in a parade at half time of the, of the championship game. So we're going to do a load of cool things at this game, and, and Really, it, it is kid themed. We want we want to be that um, family entertainment, really, and that that's the part of the market that we really want to target and focus on. All right, sounds great. Everybody needs to come to Ricardo Silva Stadium, November 9th, Support Miami yeah. FC. Uh, you guys watching this, you obviously care about local soccer because we always talk local soccer. So come support local soccer. Paul, thanks so much for spending some time with us, and I look forward to uh, hopefully doing it again. Thanks for your time. We could talk you. uh, hours you. on your past. Yeah, you will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another day. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Check out all the trophies at Inter Miami's won as we were talking to Paul Daglishi. We were talking about some of the trophies. Plethora of trophies here at the Miami FC office. They've done their fair share of winning, that's for sure. Here's the heartbeat of Miami FC, where it all happens, all the business happens, uh, the ticket sales, the, the me media stuff, whatever. Here's all the desks for the guys that uh, do all the work to make Miami FC what it is. Win all those championships like we were showing. What a cool interview with Paul Daglish. So like we said at the end of the interview, make sure you come out November 9th, support 
local soccer, support Miami FC. They're, uh, you know, they're not the only game in town, as we all know, but support them. They're looking to do a lot of things very local. They're really looking to reach out into the community. Some of the things that Paul said really want to become uh, the community team here in Miami. So check them out. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe this video, and we will see you next time. Thank you.